Hey there. Just wanted to give you some quick tips to uh, make your ab workouts a little better. Um, I'm doing this video because I'll soon be shooting a few ab exercise videos for you and I just kind of want to mentally prepare you before we get in to those videos. Um, if you watched my six pack ab video, you know that you cannot spot reduce fat anywhere on your body. Your body and your metabolism chooses when and where the fat will come off your body. Now certainly doing ab exercises will help to reduce overall body fat, but it's not going to just remove it from your stomach. So no no matter how many sit-ups you do or how many gizmos you use for your abs, you're not going to get rid of that belly fat just by ab workouts. Um, and another thing I explained to you was that if you overwork the abs and you haven't lost the body fat, then those abs grow because they're a muscle and they just push that layer of fat out further making you look fatter. And what do we want? We don't want big bulky abs and waistline. We want that nice slender waistline, right? So overworking the abs is a lost cause. Just don't fiddle with it. But a couple of important points that I want to make right here today is that one reason our ab workouts are ineffective is because we tend to rest or let our ab muscles rest between each rep, especially if we're doing our ab workouts on the floor. If you're doing crunches, you come up and you come down and then you come up and then you come down. Well, every time you come down to the floor, the tension comes off your abs and therefore they disengage. And when you come up in the crunch, there's a point where you hit that relaxation phase again and the tension comes off the abs and they disengage. So you're going to have to work with your own individual body to know where that stopping point is just before your abs disengage. When you go down, when you go back, and when you crunch, where that point is where they disengage and stop just before it. So keeping constant tension on your abs throughout the entire ab workout is what you want. If you think about it, when you're doing shoulder presses or squats or bench presses or anything, other type of weightlifting exercise, You've got constant tension on those deltoids during the shoulder press, right? There's tension as you're pushing the weight. And as you're letting the weight down, there's tension. And while you're holding it, before you start your next rep, you still have tension. So if you treated your deltoids like you treated your abs, you would do your rep, rack the weight, Unrack the weight, do your rep, rack the weight, let those muscles relax. That's not how you build the muscle, and that's not how you strengthen it. So if you're not going to do that for your other body parts, why would you do it for your abs? The same thing goes for the obliques. And one of the popular oblique exercises that I see people do is side bends. Right? Now they're good exercise for the obliques. They're not the best, but they're a good one. The problem is, is I see people bend all the way over, they got the weight in this hand, and then they come up, and they might even drop over on the weight side too. And then they come all the way over and up. Well, what they've done is they go all the way over. At some point, those obliques disengage, and the muscles along your spine and your back take over because you put stress on them and they want to work to pull your body back up 
so that your spine is in a neutral and erect position. So, essentially, you haven't done anything for your obliques, but you've done a great workout for, you know, your muscles in your back. So, tighten up those obliques. If you got the weight on this side, only move three to four inches. Make sure you keep that oblique engaged and then come back up to center and keep the tension on that oblique three to four inches and up. Switch the weight, do the same thing on the other side. Don't go side to side, you know, like you're trying to reach over and pull up your socks. You lose the tension that a oblique muscle disengages and your back takes over instead. Now, the other and probably most important thing about ab workouts and ab exercises is people tend to go into the overkill mode. All right? 30, 60, 80, 100, 200 sit-ups or crunches or whatever they're doing for their ab exercise. You know, they might do one set of a hundred crunches or they might do several sets of a hundred crunches. Let me ask you this. When was the last time you did a hundred reps per set on the bench press? When was the last time you did a hundred reps per set on barbell curls? You probably never have, huh? Why? It's overkill and, you know, it overstimulates your muscle, breaks down your nervous system, takes you longer to recover, and in effect, can reverse what you're trying to do, which is gain muscle and strength. So, if you're not going to do it for your bench press, your squats, your curls, why on earth would you do it for your abs? Three sets, 15 reps is adequate for your abs. You don't need any more than that. Regardless of what your other muscle group workouts might be, you don't need any more than that. You don't have to work your abs every single day, several times a day, with 15 different exercises. I use one, maybe two ab exercises at the end of my weightlifting routine, and I lift three days a week. When I tighten up my abs, I can feel the muscle, and I can feel the six-pack under there. So, you know, I, I still have a little belly jelly I need to lose to make those six-packs pop out and be visible for everybody. But the point is, overkill is pointless, all right? You don't need to do it. If you're not going to do it for your other muscle groups, don't do it for your abs. Don't fall gimmick into those gimmicks, okay, and lose your money from what you see on TV. That little chair that has the rollers on it and the little spring hinge gives you tension on the way back. Well, what's that got to do with working your abs? If you're pushing back, you're using your back muscles. And then you got that little spring that helps you come forward. Well, that's pointless, you know. Okay, so use that little chair for back exercises. It's not doing anything for your abs. Anything that's going to assist you in doing that crunch or that ab curl, it's pointless, okay? You need to work the muscle yourself. And the little plastic thing that you can hook your feet in and looks like a luge that they use in the Olympics, it's called perfect setup, clicks when you do a perfect setup. Well, how does that thing know if I've done a perfect setup? You know, my body is shorter than somebody else's. So, you know, 
what's a perfect setup for me might not be a perfect setup for another person. So that little thing, don't waste your money on it. Don't waste your money on the things you see on TV. Best way is to just get in there and do the hard work yourself. Lastly, your abs are engaged almost 24-7. So, you don't need to go overkill on them. Anytime you lift weights, your abs automatically engage. All right? They keep you upright during the day. They help you when you bend over to tie your shoes. You use them when you get out of bed. You use them for turning and everything else. So you don't have to go overkill with your abs in the gym. Well, I hope you found these little tips and some of these pointers useful. And once we get into the ab exercises uh, videos, um, we'll get into a little more detail on these tips. We'll get into breathing, form, tension, and exactly how far you should be going and some of the best ab exercises to help you get that six pack. You want six pack abs? Yes, you're going to have to work for them. No, they're not going to burn the fat off your belly or, you know, the ab exercises, but we can get you there. We can show you the right way to do it. So, think about what I had to say today, mull that over, and get ready for some unique and new kinds of ab exercises coming up here on Iron Shamrock Fitness.